What's good, you guys? It's your boy Jay Freshman back with another tutorial, just continuing the drill series. This is going to be episode three. Let's just jump right in. What I like to do is I like to start from where most of the sounds are playing. So you're just going to highlight this section. So the first thing I like to do when it comes to mixing is definitely leveling your mix. And if you watch any of my other tutorials, you know I like to have my kicks at 9 dB. Remember, you don't have to get caught up in the numbers. It's just leave yourself a good enough headroom. All right, so the kick is already at 9 dB. So I usually like to have my snares match up with my kicks, but since I have this clap that is layered with my snare, what I'm gonna do is put on a drum bus. I'm just gonna label it. So now I could just pull down my snare and the clap instead of trying to go and pull down the snare or the clap individually. I could just kind of level it. And what I'm gonna do with the clap, the snare and the clap is actually put a limiter on it because it's like jumping a little. Let me show you what I mean. Like it's just jumping around. It's going from nine dB back down to 11. So you definitely want to compress it too. So I'm gonna control the peaks. And then I'm gonna compress it. The thing while I'm still gonna compress it, yeah, I could put all the levels at the same velocity but then you know when it comes to like if you're being creative with your drums and you're having different velocities just to have like a realistic vibe to your drums which is good you still want to compress so you could kind of glue the mix together you don't really have to but i just want it to sound more glue so i'm not going to even compress it as hard i'll probably put a two to one ratio Turn down the release because it's not going to make sense if your release is all the way up here. It's just going to compress the whole thing. Like I said, it's a very light compression. You probably won't notice it. And I can even push this back up. And usually when you gain stage, you want to push it back up right here just to make sure that there's an actual difference. So since the ceiling is right there, it's gonna compress it the more I push up the gain. And I'm not trying to really compress it anymore, so that's why I'm gonna use this knob instead. All right, so pretty much the snare and the kick is level. Get the bass going. pocket and what I mean by pocket is like obviously this is too low obviously that's too high that sounds good it just fits that's what I mean by pocket and then 808 Turn it. I'm gonna turn it down from over here because it was originally turned down from the channel rack. Nice. Make sure. I could turn up the open hats a bit. Kind of make it match the hats or fall right behind the hats. The perks is good where it's at. The impact is good where it's at. Find a pocket for the crack. sounding good now we just gotta like go into the balancing stage of mixing so we're not really getting to the creative stage yet right now the bass is kind of in stereo because it's going to left and the right because of the panning 
usually you like to have your bass in mono. So the thing is, you will want to put like an imager. You pretty much want to keep the highs panning, but you want the very, very lows to still be mono so that your mix doesn't sound wobble or muddy, you feel me? You see how I still want those to be panned like that. If I put everything in mono, it's not going to be panned. So I'm going to solo the bass. So that the very low end, I can even so solo like the mid, like the made a bass I guess right here and then next I like to add like a parametric EQ2 on the 808 and take out about 30 Hertz <laughs> and you just kind of want to do that with most of your beats or <laughs> I do it with all my beats but it's to each his zone and the reason why I do this is because it's not audible and it's just kind of unwanted frequencies and I like to take out the highs just some of the highs, not like all of it. Just so that it's not gonna clash with the kick or any other high frequency. And anytime you feel like your bass ain't loud enough, that's why I say you gotta still mix by your your ears. I mean your eyes. Because you may think by the DB or just by hearing it, you might think that the 808 sounds a bit low, but if you look at the mix, like this is how your bass is really, the bass is actually really loud. So I actually got to turn it down, but in my headphones, it sounded like it was just right. This is just a good way to translate your mix. You ain't got to get all technical. Like I just double check. And with the pad, I actually, before, in the first tutorial I didn't show you guys that I actually already had this effect on it and I just cut out all the lows and the highs to keep it dark and not as bright like this is how it would sound and that's cool that's cool too I was just going for a more darker vibe so that's why I cut out the highs and I probably didn't have to cut out that much of the highs, but I realized if I was bringing up more of the highs, right, it had like this piercing frequency that I didn't like. So I just kept it like this. And then the filter is for, you know, the automation that goes into there. You can see all that low end. That's why I like the new EQ. At first I didn't like it, I ain't gonna cap, because I just felt like it was like a lot of clutter, but it really shows you like visually that it still had a lot of low end. Even though before you would just have to look at the lighter purple, but now you can like really see that there's still low end. That's going all the way into the base. And like I said, you just kind of want to just clean up those frequencies. You don't want to, you ain't got to get all crazy and get that close. I'll just cut out somewhere in the midst. Because the hi-hats is usually like high mids to the treble. So it didn't have to go all the way to the bass. Turn up the hi-hats a bit. And I can even do that with the snare and the clap. So you want to gain stage because as soon as you start cutting out some lows, it starts to boost the frequency. So bring it back down. So we could go through the rest of the sounds and just kind of take out any other low end because EQ is all about saving space or making space, I should say.
check out the Vox. <laughs> and I already did that with the impact. I already cut out some of the low end. So that's pretty much like the basic steps that you want to do when it comes to your mix. You definitely want to take out um, the low end, like 30 hertz in your bass or your kick. And also you just want to make space and just clean up the rest of your sounds. Like how you seen the hi-hat had a lot of low end. It doesn't need that because, you know, we need our bass to go through. We need our melodies to go through. Even though it had like a little bass and it wasn't major, but all those will add up frequency. So now we could get into creative mixing because as far as like panning, yeah, you can pan the hi hats. I pan it, you know, seven percent to the left. But everything else is like already panned. The sound, this sound, the pad and the choir is already like a stereo. The 808 is doing its own thing in mono, but also in stereo with the slides. Kick is mono. Snare and clap is mono. You know, you usually want to have your drums mono because you want it in their face, you feel me? Or to be more present. And the box. And, and at the same time, like, you don't have to always pan everything because the thing is, like, I don't have to really pan this Vox because it's only going to play, like, once every four bars or whatever. So it's like, it's not clashing with nothing. So now we could get into creative mixing. I'm gonna actually just throw V verb on the snare and clap. <laughs> when I put V verb on my drums, I like to put it in the aux so it doesn't take away from the actual sound. Definitely put reverb on the box. <laughs> and it's good to do your reverb with only just the drums playing because then you could really not overdo it with your reverb because if you have your melodies playing, you're going to think that you need to turn it up louder so you can hear it more in the mix. Sometimes it's all about context. I know I don't want too much reverb in this mix, so that's why I'm gonna just, you know, I solo the 808 and the pad. <laughs> this needs to be like tucked in the background. So when you hear it together, you're not gonna really hear the reverb, but it's there. That subtle difference. So when it comes to creative effects, you know, chorus, you got to understand what these plugins are doing. Like chorus is really just like a stereo with its own kind of texture. Honestly, that first one is good. Let's turn it down a bit.
impact has reverb. So most of your sounds is going to already have like their own kind of effects on it unless you take it off. Sometimes it's best to take it off just so that you can really be more particular with your mix and your reverb. But also you definitely want to compress your drum so I'm going to put it in a bus. And the reason why I say that, like, a lot of people are going to say you don't really have to, but I feel like, you know, that's just going by air again. I like to go by sight as well because, you know, like, it could be knocking on your speakers, but then when you play it in the car or whatever, it's just not knocking like how you think. So that's why I like to compress it just to bring up the dynamic. Let me take off the... Keep the 808. Now, obviously, you can see it's, that's too much compression. Compression. That's because the attack is low. Bring up your attack. down your release because most of these sounds are short like your kick and your snare these are very quick and short transients so if you have it all the way up here it's just only going to compress longer and we still want to keep that dynamic range we don't want it to be too compressed where there's no dynamic range because then that means there's really no groove so now if you want it more punchier just don't have your attack so low That sweet spot. I like that. And then we get this A B it. So it's hitting that negative nine. It's kind of jumping all over the place. So just kind of go by air. Listen to the kick. Listen to the kick in the snare. You get a share that is just it's night and day pretty much. <laughs> What I'm gonna do though, because I don't want it to be jumping all everywhere, so definitely have a ceiling on it. And honestly, the best way to have done this comparison, AB, you really wanted to put the ceiling first and then put another limiter of the compressor and then that way it won't be jumping up too much and that way you could be able to like really hear the difference if you AB it. But I already know, I can already hear the kick is already hidden harder and the snare and the hi-hat is brought up a bit more. But if you wanna be on the safe side, you know, side chain your 808. So I'm gonna just do that real quick. Yeah, you want to do side chain to this track, not side chain, not side chain to this track only, because then it's going to take it off of all the other effects, and we don't want that. So boom, make sure you make it external on the low end or any frequency band that you want to be compressed, and I just want the low end. So turn down your attack. Find the sweet spot again. I can even bring up my 808 more. But that's pretty much that for mixing, man. I don't really go too crazy with my mixing. Like, you could spend all day or, you know, a couple of days on it 
how, however long you spend on it. But I advise to just get your beats out there, bro. You're going to get better over time. Like, what you learn in one of your mixes, you can just apply to the next beat. That's how I look at it. But there you go.